Tim now. Can you hear me? It's Raggy Omar in the ITV News Studio. Good afternoon. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear now. Great. Very, very good to have you uh, with us. Tim, um, it's been an extraordinary time for you uh, up there. I'm just wondering, has the whole experience of being up in space been everything that you hoped for? You know, the whole experience has been everything I hoped for and even more. Um, there, there are no words can really uh, describe what it's like to, uh, to experience a rocket launch, uh, to, to go into space and to see that first sunrise uh, as you orbit the planet. And everything that I've managed to achieve in this six-month mission has just been incredible. I was very fortunate to get a spacewalk early on. We've had a hugely dynamic visiting vehicle schedule, lots of uh, resupply of vehicles coming. Uh, we've done over 250 science experiments in the six months I've been up here. So uh, it's been a remarkable mission. I'm hugely grateful for all the help and the support that I've had from everybody to make this dream come true. Well, obviously, a huge amount of activity, as you were just describing, and uh, testings and, uh, and um, many other sort of things. In that time, have you been able to reflect on the fact that your presence there as a British astronaut has really caught the public imagination and what you make of it and what you think the reasons behind that are. Yes, you know, we're, we're actually quite isolated up here, and so I have uh, felt a bit distant from everything that's going on uh, back on planet Earth, which is not surprising, I guess. Uh, but it was something I always wanted to do to, before the mission was to share this as much as pos possible with everybody. Uh, it's such a, a privilege to be able to go into space and such a unique opportunity. And so uh, I've tried to reach out to encourage uh, school kids of all ages in all sorts of areas, and I, I think we've really managed to achieve that with a very ambitious education outreach program so I'm just delighted that so many people um, you know in UK in Europe have joined in with this mission and that uh, hopefully I've been able to try and inspire some uh, some kids of our next generation of, of young scientists and engineers to look at space and science in a different way this whole mission and your involvement with it was a real seen as a real shot in the arm for UK science is that something you're really going to persist with once you're back on Earth. Absolutely. I, I think it's hugely important, um, you know, that we do continue to encourage uh, a younger generation to take up science and engineering subjects. Uh, I think science is incredibly important for our future. We, we face a number of different problems, and uh, science and engineering is going to be vital for us in the future for solving these. Um, and so it's certainly something I intend to be very active in when I return. Well, speaking of inspiring the young, we've had some questions coming in on, on Facebook. One from Dan Savage from Northampton, who's nine years old, and he asks, if you had a choice, would you stay in space for the rest of your life or come back to Earth? It's actually a difficult choice. Uh, no, of course, I've got family back home and friends, and so I'm looking forward to seeing them again. And uh, with a young family as well, being away for over six months is, is particularly difficult. But uh, quite frankly, you know, being in space is, is wonderful, and it's a great experience. And I can, I can see how um, Scott uh, Kelly and Mikhail Konienko, who were up here for a year whilst I was on board the space station as well, I can see how they enjoyed themselves for the whole time, and I can see how we're going to do these long longer missions in the future that take us to, to Mars and hopefully beyond. As you say, I mean, being away from so long, having a young family is very tough for them. Um, are you prepared for the enormous amount of tension you're going to get, Tim? As you say, you've been isolated up there, working away in the space station, but you left relatively unknown. You're going to come back as someone really in the public eye. Do you think you and your family are going to be prepared for that, being recognized every time you walk up and down this high street? Well, it's certainly something that will, uh, uh, you know, have changed for me and will take some getting used to. I think I'm probably fortunate in the fact that um, I'll actually be living and traveling still away from the UK quite a lot. So uh, I, I don't get recognized in Houston, of course. I'm just one of many astronauts there, which is quite nice to have an ordinary life. <laughs> um, as, as you say, um, when you do come back, I mean, looking around you with all those wires and bits of sort of technical equipment, will you miss the place? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's one of those funny things that people say when you're up in space, you always long to be on Earth. And when you're on Earth, you long to be in space. Uh, there are, you know, there are definitely, I'm going to miss this place. There are some things I won't, won't miss. I mean, we live in a, a very artificial environment, artificial lighting, constant hum of air conditioning systems. Um, and so that kind of thing, it's going to be nice to just be out in the fresh air and be back home on planet Earth and experience that. I've only got a couple of more minutes of time with you, Tim. Um, just quickly, I mean, in, you're the first official Brit to be sent to space, and in a few months' time, ministers will be having to decide as to whether the UK government continues or will fund another mission like this. How do you feel about that? You know, it was uh, you know groundbreaking for the UK to join the the human spaceflight program in 2012 at the European Space Agency Ministerial, and uh, I certainly hope that this will pave the way for the UK's continued involvement in, hu in human spaceflight. I think it's vitally important what we're doing now. We're looking ahead to the not just the International Space Station, which has a life out till about 2024, maybe slightly longer, but we're looking at lunar exploration missions, and as I mentioned before, going to Mars as well. And the UK needs to be involved right now if it wants to play a serious role in, in human spaceflight missions into the future. So uh, I certainly hope that we will continue. And in all of that, Tim, um, there's this whole debate here, as you may or may not be aware about our involvement and role in, in Europe. But talk about your career, talk about the whole mission of the European Space Agency. How important has cooperation with Europe been for these kinds of projects and Britain's role to be a, a space nation? Well, you know, cooperation is absolutely vital. Uh, we couldn't do what we do uh, if we weren't all cooperating. And that goes not just within the European Space Agency, but here on the International Space Station, when we bring in all of our partners around the world. Um, and and this, this facility simply wouldn't be here if it wasn't for everybody working together. And uh, that's certainly the case as well in many of the other uh, areas of the European Space Agency, where the UK plays a very predominant role in, in areas such as telecommunications and navigation. Um, and so I think it's vitally important that we continue to cooperate in order that we can achieve these things that one nation alone cannot do. And you're preparing to come back and uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Easier said than done. I understand it's actually quite a difficult and uh, tricky operation, quite dangerous potentially. Yes, I think, uh, you know, there are probably three areas which are high risk, the launch, the landing and doing spacewalks. And so the landing is definitely not a trivial event. We have to decelerate from 17 and a half thousand miles per hour, come into the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and of course, that takes a, a lot of punishment on both the spacecraft and it takes a lot of punishment on the body as well. Uh, so uh, but at most, most astronauts describe it as a really good ride. So I'm just looking forward to it at this stage. Well, have a really good ride, and thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us here at ITV News, Tim. That's uh, much appreciated. Thank you very much indeed, and uh, safe journey back. Many thanks indeed. Great, great talking to you. Tim, this is Dan Walker with BBC Breakfast at Harwell. How do you hear me? Hello, Dan. I can hear you loud and clear. Great stuff. If you're ready, Tim, we're ready to go, so I'll start asking the questions. Tim, thank you so much for joining us on BBC Breakfast this morning. So under three weeks to go until you return home from the International Space Station. What are your overriding emotions? Is it relief? Is it excitement? Um, you know, actually, we, we kind of uh, work on a day-to-day -day basis, so although I'm very conscious of the fact that I do return in less than three weeks, we've still got an awful, awful lot of work to do up here. Uh, we've still got one of our cargo vessels, Cygnus, is still docked to the space station, and we're busy loading that, and that will actually depart before I depart. So uh, there's still a lot of things to happen, and so I take each day at a time, lots of still science going on a, on a daily basis. But, of course, I am looking forward to seeing friends and family again, and uh, I am looking comfortable forward to coming back to planet Earth.
Tim, what's the highlight of your time in space been? If we were to have this conversation, let's say, 20, 25 years down the line, what would be the one thing, do you think, that will really shine out at you? Do you know, the whole experience has been absolutely incredible and so much more than I imagined. But if I did have to pick one thing, it would be doing the spacewalk. And it would be the first moment that I kind of came out of the, the airlock and uh, Tim Copra, my NASA co colleague and myself, we went outside and uh, did that spacewalk. It was an amazing feeling. And we've seen you be involved in so much from down here. The, the tuxedo for the Brits. I can see the rugby ball behind you for the launch of the Six Nations. You ran the London Marathon. There must have been, just on that side of things, so much practical planning that went into not only getting the things there with you, but also all that activity before you even got to space. That's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, coming to space is a huge privilege. And it's some, it was one of my ambitions was to share this mission as much as possible with as many people as possible. Um, I'm the lucky one who gets to go to space, but I really wanted to try and reach out to all ages to enjoy this mission as well. And that involved an enormous amount of people on, uh, you know, in both the UK Space Agency, the European Space Agency, in helping to plan this mission out, all of those events that you've mentioned, and so many of the educational programs that we've had running. Uh, we've engaged with over a million school children during this mission, which is just absolutely phenomenal. And uh, we couldn't have done that without a great team of, of supporting me back on Earth. Hmm. Yeah, that has been an amazing part of it. And we feel that we've had a very strong connection with you as well, listening to you, watching you. And most of the time we see you, Tim, you've been smiling. But I would imagine six months away from your family, there must have been some dark times up there as well. Sometimes when you... Even though you're busy and you're trying to keep yourself busy, it must have been emotional on occasions. You know, actually, I, I, we, we all keep a very positive attitude up here, and that's something that we're very conscious of, of doing as a crew, but also Mission Control are very conscious of, and, and they help us with that as well. So there haven't really been those, those moments that you describe. Of course, I've missed my friends and family, but the communications up here are so good these days that I have the ability to phone them, and once a week we get to do a video conference as well. Uh, so even from that perspective, it's not, not been too bad. Uh, so and the, the workload, you know, they keep us busy up here, and we're too, too busy to really to, to let emotions get in the way of anything else. <laughs> well, you say busy. You've been involved in a whole series of experiments while you've been up there. And you yourself are the, are the focus of those experiments as well. Lots of people have been sending questions in about how, you, how your body has been affected because people who spend a lot of time in microgravity, they say, often get what they refer to as bird legs and a puffy face. How has your body been holding up with all the time you've been spending in space? It has been interesting, really. You know, you mentioned the puffy face. I definitely felt that in the first month up here, this kind of pressure in my head, puffy face. But that's disappeared, and I've actually kind of lost all of that excess body fluid, which I'm going to need when I get back to Earth. So uh, in the last few weeks, we've been, uh, my, myself and my crewmates are returning. We've been working hard on the exercise devices, getting ourselves into physical shape for coming back to Earth. Um, but you're right, there will definitely be a period of, of rehabilitation and readjusting to living in Earth's gravity and probably a, a first couple of days will be quite painful. I wanted to ask you about that, I suppose you could call it a re programme, not just being back on Earth, but the attention, the attention you'll get as well. Um, you are a serious celebrity now, Mr Peake. <laughs> Yes, that's, that's going to take some getting used to, and uh, you know, I, I, you say that, but actually, you, you do feel quite isolated up here on the space station. And uh, although we have access to the news and uh, occasionally on the internet as well, um, you know, we, we don't really get the, the feeling of things that are going on back on Earth that much. So that will certainly get some uh, take some getting used to. Tim, what do you think is next for you? We were speaking to, to Helen Sharman, um, who was a, a trailblazer, of course, in, in your line of work many years ago. We spoke to her just last week, and she said the hope is, the great hope is, that Tim isn't the last, that we continue to do this, and there's a really bright future for, for British astronauts in space. 
Absolutely, and I, can, I, you know, I fully intend to continue my work with the European Space Agency representing the UK uh, within human spaceflight, and I hope that the UK continues to participate in human spaceflight as well into the future. We've got such an exciting times coming up. We've got plenty more missions to the International Space Station with its life out until at least 2024, and then we're looking uh, very strongly towards lunar missions in the mid-20s, mid to late 20s, as a stepping stone onto missions to Mars as well. So I want the UK to be a firm player in those human spaceflight missions and exploration missions of the future, and there's no reason why we shouldn't be. And I certainly hope that I'm not the last UK astronaut to fly in space. I hope there's many UK school kids today who can fulfill an ambition one day of becoming an astronaut. Some quick fire ones to finish off with. Um, lots of people sending their questions in for you, Tim. Steph would like to know, what is the first meal you will have on your return to Earth? Uh, well, the unhealthy version would be pizza. The healthy version would be a nice fresh salad with some fresh fruit. Both, both actually, I really crave. Go for the pizza. Um, Julie would like to know, I'm sorry, Diane would like to know, um, what is your greatest concern about returning to Earth? Is it, is it the celebrity lifestyle you'll now have to lead? Um, you know, that is a concern as well. I mean, my main focus when I get back, of course, is spending time with the family and, uh, and, and seeing my friends and my family again. Uh, and there will be a very busy travel schedule, of course. There'll be lots of medical experiments. All this data that I've been collecting up here in space carries on for at least six months, up to a year in some cases after the mission. Um, so there's going to be an awful lot of work to do. Uh, but uh, my first priority is to spend some time with friends and family. Sounds very wise. And one more from Adrian. He says, you've seen some remarkable things from space. We've seen some of your wonderful photographs as well. Having seen all that, is there a place or maybe some places on Earth you would now like to go and see in person, having seen them from so many miles above? Uh, that's a great question. There are so many places I'd love to go and see, um, uh, and everything has just been incredible. It's been wonderful to actually watch the planet changing seasons, you know, seeing the northern hemisphere uh, going from snow and ice into, through spring into summer, um, and in the southern hemisphere, watching places like Patagonia, um, you know, absolutely stunning uh, countries and areas of the world that I hadn't seen before. Um, so there, there are plenty of places that I'd like to go and visit, probably too many than I'll be able to. Tim, it's been wonderful to talk to you on BBC Breakfast. We hope to see you back on Terra Firma very soon. And we'll sort you out a pizza, OK? <laughs> That'll be much appreciated. Great talking to you too. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.